morning, Calvary Church. Good morning, church family. We're so glad that you decided to join us this morning for service. Before we get started, we want you to feel as comfortable as possible about this service. We understand that these are trying times that we're going through during this pandemic, and, and we want we know that God has put in a hedge of protection around us as we meet in his house. Psalms 31 or 4 says, Pull me from the trap my enemies set for me, for I find protection in you alone. That being said, we want to offer you a peace of mind while you are here. We have a special announcement for next Sunday, May 10th. Our Christian Education Director, Ashley Butts, will be our special guest speaker for Mother's Day. It's going to be an awesome day as we celebrate all of our mothers. So make sure you are here early as, ser as service will start at 1030. Speaking of Mother's Day, we would like to take a moment and congratulate our young adult pastor, Jake Alexander, and our worship leader, Kristen Alexander, of the birth of their new baby girl, Reese McKinley Alexander. She was born Friday, April 24th at 658. Congratulations, guys. Also at this time, we would like to make mention that our midweek services here at Calvary will resume this coming Wednesday, May 6th at 7 p.m. And I could not be more excited about that. Bridge students, I have missed y'all so much. I know we've been away, it seems like, forever. Uh, but, but come expecting a word from the Lord. God's given me some things uh, to speak to you guys. And I am so excited. I can't wait to see y'all. It's going to be awesome. Ruach Student Ministries, we are so excited about next Wednesday night and can't wait to get back together. Um, I would like to make the, the church aware that our um, Ruach Student Ministry has a YouTube page and we have been throughout this time, um, when we haven't been meeting, we've been recording some worship videos. So please go check that out. It's Ruach Student Ministries YouTube. Um, it's, it's easy to find. There's several um, worship videos on there that I think you will really, really enjoy. We also don't forget to, to subscribe to the Calvary Church Media page on YouTube, where we will re-air every Sunday service on Monday nights at 7 p.m. If you miss it, don't worry. Um, you, can, you can catch it again on Mondays. And that's good for Mondays, but please don't forget to like and share the service on Facebook. We need to get this word out to the, ma uh, to the masses. I know that Bishop Trey has a word for us today, and he is excited to be able to bring that message. Also, we are starting to ramp up our social media presence, and we would like for you to join the other pages as well. You can, uh, can reach us on Instagram, at Calvary underscore Upstate, uh, Twitter, at Calvary Upstate, Facebook, Calvary Church, and the YouTube channel, as Pastor Opie said, Calvary Church Media. If this is your first time here at Calvary, we would like for you to fill out a Connect card in, in front of your seat and take it to the tent outside for a free gift. If, if, if this is your first time online, please go visit calvaryupstate.com backslash online. Click Connect and we will also send you a free gift as well. Also, we would love, to know, uh, we would love for you to know that on that website, there's an option for you to give as well. It's super easy to set up and totally secure. All you have to do is enter your amount, select the fund you would like to go in, which just want to throw this out there, Bridge Juniors Ministry would be a great ministry to send money to. Um, and, and click submit. It's that easy. So you don't really want to have to look up that website name or forget to bring cash or check. Don't worry, we have text to give as well. All you do is text the word GIVE to 1-864-513-6108. Follow the prompts if it's your first time. Once you have set it up, all you have to do from then is text the amount, the fund name that you would like for it to go to, and you're done. That's it. <clears throat> Well, you might ask, what if I put in the wrong amount or, or the wrong fund name, um, then what I do? All you have to do is text REFUND. Within 15 minutes, it will be canceled out. Also, I just want to make mention of that number again. It's 1-864-513-6108. And some of the key words of the different fund names that, that you could go to, TIES uh, would, is, is GIVE, uh, GENERAL FUNDS would be GENERAL, uh, building fund would be vision. Uh, food bank would be food bank, all one word. Men and women of action would be MWOA. Young at heart would be Y at H. Ruach student ministry would be Ruach. 
and Bridge Junior High, which again is a great ministry to give to, Take would be would be Bridge uh, Calvary Kids Ministry is CC Kids. Here at Calvary, during this this hard time, one of the things that we are very very proud of is is our students. And 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 for just a moment, and we're going to do some more of this. I want to focus and just tell how proud we are of our 2020 graduates. And we want to recognize each and every one of you. So if you have a high school graduate or a college graduate, um, please see myself, or you can go by the tent outside on your way out of church. Pick up a packet. Um, that has the information of the upcoming events and things that we're going to be doing for them. And we will also be recognizing them in a service May 24th. So at that time, I think we've knocked out all of our uh, announcements for this time. So if y'all would, if y'all would just stand all over the house, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to hear this awesome worship team lead us into the presence of God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time to come together, God, and worship you. In the times of uncertainty that we have faced, God, it's an awesome pleasure to be back in church today and worshiping you, the one that is, is our protector over this time. God, we love you, we thank you, and praise you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Calvary, this is your call to worship. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. We ask, Lord, that you would do great and mighty things in here this morning, God. Touch this worship, God, but let our worship, God, rise up and open the heavens, open the windows of heaven, God. Lord, we praise you today. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. God, we come expecting things to happen today. God, we love you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you've been trying to fill the same old hole inside, well, there's a better life. Well, there's a better life. If you got pain, He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way he maker. If you need freedom to save him, it's a prison shaking savior. Got shame. He's a chain breaker. We both search for the light of day in the dark of night. Born out from the same old fight. We've all run the things we know just ain't right. Well, there's a better life. Yeah, there's a better life. Take her. 
him a hand clap of praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Praise your mighty name. Yes, hallelujah. You got, you got pain. pain. Come on now, church. You sing it. Pain, today you will know that the spirit of God is in this house this morning I got up this morning and I, I went in my closet and I said Lord I get to dress up and go to church this morning I'm not watching church sitting in my recliner I'm not watching church sitting in there with my feet thrown back but I'm sitting here in the house of the Lord this morning, got out a brand new shirt, put that shirt on, comb, well, I didn't comb my hair, but you know what I mean. I got myself ready and I said, Lord, it don't matter what I look like, it don't matter what I smell like, it don't matter what I feel like, I'm going to the house of the Lord to see you this morning and allow you to visit in this morning. I'm not gonna break the spirit of worship that we have, but I will tell you this, there's two big pots over here on the sides. And we're gonna do a three, I'm sorry. We're gonna, we need these full this morning now. <laughs> I wanna commend you on how that you have given through the hardest of times. Some of you, we try to figure out how to do it online. We got it, amen. But today, I can bring it to the house of the Lord and I can plant it in this flower pot believing that God is gonna sow a ministry. He's gonna sow, he's gonna improve, he's gonna grow things, he's gonna multiply, he's gonna press it down, shake it together, he's gonna do with it. This morning I ask you, if you would, we just raise up your offering towards heaven. We're gonna pray over it right now, but during this next song, we're not stopping. We're gonna play this song, they're gonna minister. This is just as much a part of worship as anything else we do. I wanna invite you to come and to drop your offering into this right now. God, in the name of Jesus. I praise you. I praise you that we can be in this house right now, Lord God. And God, we can do what you've asked us to do and that's assemble ourselves together to worship you. Now, Father, I worship you in my tithe and my offering now, Lord. In Jesus' and holy and precious name, amen and amen. Worship with this team as you bring your tithe and offering.
together. a thank you Jesus that you didn't give and you should have if there was a hand that should have been lifted and you didn't do it if there was a glory to God in your voice and you didn't do it well guess what today is that day we're not going to leave any stone unturned we're not going to leave any door unopened we're going to make sure that we get out of us the praise that is due to him today I have not come today to patty cake and play games. I have missed this and I have needed this. My soul longs to worship him. This is medicine to my spirit, to my soul. So if you don't want to partake, maybe I will eat yours too. Because I've come to die in the presence of the Lord today. Lift up your hands and lift up your voice. Give him the praise. Give him the worship that is due him today. Lord, we honor you. We give you praise today, God. Lift up a voice of praise. Lift up a shout of praise. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Lord, we worship you. Say so.
taking this for granted? Have we taken this for granted? Come on. Let's just give God praise and worship right now for the opportunity to be able to come into the house and to worship. Come on. Lord, we thank you that we can gather in your house today, God. God, we worship you. We praise you, Jesus. I have not moved off my throne. Seek me. And I will show you things that you have never seen. Come on, somebody.
Just play softly. Can you do that? Jesus. Practicing uh, this past week, the praise team were, and we've not had any chairs out uh, for for video purposes. And if you see uh, some people walking around with a, a phone and, and, and whatnot, video, listen, we're we're amping up our our video stuff and our Facebook live. So just they're just part of part of our our ministry. So don't pay them no attention. Just they're worshiping. Greg and to help me put chairs out while they were up here singing and we were just putting all chairs back out and I was doing everything I could to hold it together because every chair I put back I was like thank you God and um, even my daughter she's fighting mad this morning she's, she's in toddler's church she wanted to be up here, and I told her, I said, you know, you'll, you'll be fine. It's ministry. But even she's got a spirit of expectancy. And she told me while I was putting chairs out, she's like, something's about to happen, ain't it? I was like, yep. If my 15-year-old can sense that something's shifting, been so stinking busy this morning, just everywhere, running everywhere. I was up at 5.30 running. I've got hand sanitizer. I feel like running out of my ears. I've put it at bathrooms, at doors. I've wiped down every door handle, every microphone, everything. I've tried my best to make sure that we've got everything as clean as possible. I was busy, 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 and I wasn't really thinking spiritually about anything. I was just wanting to make sure everything was taken care of. I come right about where that video camera was. Nobody's in here. It's just me. And I walked by, and as I did, I just felt the Holy Spirit say, Son, <clears throat> everything up to this point. See, see we think that, that it's over with lost momentum or I don't know but something stopped me Vic he said he said boy everything up to this point has just been the previews the show's about to start can I tell you that we are about to see a move of God take place like we've never seen before Come on, somebody. 
If you're watching right now, now I'm, I'm going to be very proactive with Facebook and I'm going to be very proactive with our social media. But if you're watching right now, I want you to agree with me. I want everybody in this house to agree with me right now that we are about to cross over this river, that we are about to see a breakthrough, that we are about to see things change. Everything that we've seen and done, we thank you, God, for that. But Lord, open our eyes to the things that we have not seen or heard or done or been a part of yet. God, God, we pray, Lord, <coughs> that you would just open up the floodgates at this point, God, and that you would pour out on us. Lord, that you would do a work on us, God, that you would do a work in our spirits and in our lives right now. Come on, right now, open up your mouth and declare that unto God. God, we are ready for an outpouring of your spirit. We're ready for an outpouring of your glory. God, do a work in us right now, God. Lord, we need you, Jesus. be seated in the house of the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise before you do. Before I go any further, I want to do something real quick. And um, I just want to, uh, I want to say thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you. I know it's not everybody in the house, but it's all right. I'm glad anybody's here. For the last two months, I've just been preaching to one person in the house. And a lot of people have been watching, but my man Lee back there has been faithful every service. He's had to. He's come and videoed. But with that being said, I want to show honor to where honor is due. Lee Blackwell, we would not be able to do what we're doing right now without you. I just want you to know that I love you and I appreciate you. He has spent hours upon hours. Every video you watch took hours to edit and upload and download. He has been here every service and videoed. He has done praise team, pre-recordings. He has done video. He has done everything and he has not complained one bit. He has smiled about it and been eager to do it. I want you to get up on your feet right now and I want you to let him know how much you... Lee, you stay right back there. I want you to... Opie, take this to him. We love you. We thank you. Come on, let him know how much you love him and appreciate him. Amen. God's good. Isn't God good? I'm expecting some amens because I ain't heard a peep in two weeks. I don't even care if you like the message or not. How about a courtesy amen every now and then? How about that? Come on, somebody. That's what I'm talking about. God is good. Even my wife's amen, and we on a roll today. <sighs> Y'all ready for some word? In your Bible, turn to John chapter 4. We're going to be verses 27 through 38. I've got several scripture today, and I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna allow the Lord to speak to us today. If you've grown accustomed to me preaching short messages online, that time has passed. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm gonna try to be courteous every time, but I've not had anybody interact with. All I had to do is just get up there and talk, and um, and lead on a man ever. So. But um, John chapter 4, verses 27 through 38. And the Bible says, Just then his disciples came back, and they were shocked to find him talking to a woman. But none of them had the nerve to ask, What do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? And the woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? And so the people came streaming from the village to see him. And meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, come on, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. 
Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. And then Jesus explained, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. And the harvesters are paid good wages. And the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. You know the saying, one plants and another one harvests. And it's true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't even plant. Where others had already done the work. And now you will gather the harvest. Can somebody say praise the Lord? I want to speak to you today and let you know, regardless of what the season we have just gone through is, can I remind you that there is still work to be done? I think that it goes without saying that the last couple of months have been crazy. Can somebody say amen? Never did I think, never have I thought that I would, I would see a day and time like you and I are living in today. That we are living in right now. Never did I believe that, that because of the threat of a sickness or a virus, we would see a country almost crippled. Never did I see... In, in the near future, did I ever expect or intended? I didn't have a, a plan. You understand, we did not have a plan of attack for this when we first were hit by this. Because of a sickness, schools were shut down. And because of a sickness, jobs were temporarily closed. And because of a sickness, paper products became the value of gold. Never did I think that we would see this kind of stuff. However, guess what? That's where we are today. I've been on a, a major search for Lysol spray cans and Clorox disinfectant wipes, and it is like trying to find a pot of gold. That's crazy. Never did I think that we would come to the place to where we would be um, where we are. There's not even words to put together on, on how to describe this, but guess what? We're there today. And today, just to come and worship the Lord together in his house, just to do that, this was a big deal. Meetings have been conducted War rooms have been developed. We have dialogued and we have talked and we have come up with ideas and we have tried to figure out how to do this because not every church is doing it yet, but, but some are and some are doing this and some are doing that. And we're trying to make it to where you can be, feel safe and where it's the right way. We want to make sure that things are conducted properly. We don't want to put anybody's health in jeopardy. But... but protocols have been changed we've had to change some stuff up and that's okay on many levels uh, we've had to change some stuff up some of the things that you're seeing is, is probably going to be in, in, implemented on a permanent basis some of the things they're not but understand things like this have have had to we've had to change the mindset of how we do that and even as i speak there are many who have a thought looming over them right now Am I safe? Are things going to be okay? Am I in a safe place? Is this a, am I in the room with a, with a virus? Is, am, I, am I contaminated? Is, is there someone that is a carrier? Am I going to get it? Am I not going to get it? Who do I talk to? Who can I talk to? Can I touch somebody? It's, it's so funny. And, and we, we have some visitors here today, and I don't want to call nobody up, but I went, walked up to one of my, our visitors. I said, listen, this is not normally how we handle visitors Normally, you, you'd get, you know, bomb rushed and hugged and, and Goldberg sickle tackled. And, and you know, you're, I mean, we, we, we love on everybody. But the way we're handling ourselves is just different right now. But we ask the question, am I going to be okay? 
Don't act like y'all all got it together. I mean, we've, we've honestly, I'll probably look. I know if you've had kids uh, or female kids, <laughs> I should say that. I think it just comes with female kids' anxiety, right? Right? <laughs> Are we all going to get it? No, we're not going to all get it. I hope. <laughs> Let me see if we're on the same page here. Has anyone heard... What are we going to do? Yeah? Has anybody heard that? What are we going to do? How are we going to do this? Or has anybody said, I'm afraid to get out? I'm afraid to go somewhere. Can I tell you something? You can go anywhere in Seneca and pretty much be okay except Lowe's. (laughs) There's 3,000 people in Lowe's every second of the day for some reason. So... I'm about to change gears, so stay with me. We, we, we're at this place that we've never been before. And don't misunderstand this pastor today because I have no intention of making light of the subject. <laughs> this is a hard time for people. I mean, and I don't discourage, I'm not discouraging anyone to stay home. I'm not, I'm not saying that. It breaks my heart to know that people are afraid to be able to be in the house of the Lord because of this. And and, and that's, that's what we're living in. Our senior adults are, those that are high risk. Man, I, I don't know how you feel about it. But I miss my Levis and Marthas. I miss seeing them. And I understand what we got to do. I understand the protocol. I understand. I miss my Betty Burtons. And I miss my Fred Smiths. And I miss them. I want to see them back in the house. This is a hard time. However, somebody say, however. That should not take us by surprise. Okay? How many know that your Bible tells you that you will face hard times? It should not catch you by surprise that hard times will come. Now I got to read some scripture and I'm going to, you got to get this, all of it. And I'm going to be in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. You don't have to turn there, I'm going to move quickly. It said, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be difficult, and I'm sorry, very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents. Can I get an amen from the parents in the house? (laughs) And ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. How many know that we lack reverence in this world today? They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. How many know that people will say whatever they want to say? They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away from people like that. That's what the scripture says. Stay away from them. Praise the Lord. That's who we need to have social distancing from. Mm -hmm. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. Such women are forever following new teachings, but they never are able to understand the truth. These teachers oppose the truth just as Janus and Jabrez oppose Moses. They have deprived minds and a counterfeit faith, but they won't get away with this for long. Someday... Everyone will recognize what fools they are, just as these two did before. But you, Timothy, certainly know what I teach and how I live and what my purpose in life is. This is Paul teaching. What my purpose in life is. You know my faith and my patience and my love and my endurance. Everybody say endurance. You know how much 
uh, persecution and suffering I have endured. And you know all about how I was persecuted at Antioch. Um, But the Lord rescued me from all of it. Everybody say all of it. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Everybody, did you get that? Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I'm not done yet. But evil people and imposters will flourish. That don't make sense, but that's the scripture. And he's giving you a heads up. Don't be surprised. They will deceive others with them uh, and will themselves be deceived. Verse 14 is the catch. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know that they are true, for you know that you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes from trusting in Christ Jesus. Let me read the first part of that again. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. This is not the time or the day or the place to derail from what you have been taught all your life. The Word of God is still the Word of God, and you can't go acting like a fool just because things don't go right sometimes. Hard times and persecutions are going to come our way. So what do we do? We buckle up, we strap in, and we remember what we've been taught. Amen. But you must remain faithful to the things that you have been taught. Just because I don't live with my mom and daddy no more doesn't mean that I can talk disrespectful to women. How many know that I better remain respectful? How many know that I better remain in a way that I know I'm supposed to because my mama still jerk a knot in my head if I ain't careful? I've got to be honest with you. I've got to be honest with you. After a short amount of time of this Lockdown and isolation, and you can ask my family, on Sunday mornings, I was a wreck. Didn't do good. I wasn't very good on Sunday mornings. But after a short time of not meeting together in the house of the Lord, my mind started changing gears from being it being a physical attack to a spiritual attack on me. Because with every new order that I heard on the news, and I heard a new one every day, with every closure that I heard was coming, with every, with every prediction, whether it be uh, accurate prediction or not, it would try to drive fear. It would try to drive hesitation. It would try to drive uh, uh, th- thoughts into my mind. I mean, when I'm hearing things like we might not get any improvement or we might not see anything until the fall, and we might, when, when I start, man, I'm telling you, it, it, I wasn't worried about my physical anymore. My spirit. Spirit, the spirit within inside of me began to grieve because something I felt was attacking the spirit man inside of me. And the more I heard, the more it felt in my spirit that it was colliding with the word of God. The more I heard about how we should be, and I, I listen. The political correct terms that they were using were exactly that, political correct terms. But how they would word things and how they would say things and how they, would, and how they are still saying things, I understand that we need to be cautious, but there is, a, uh, there is a fine line between being cautious and being afraid. And I understand, again, I had... No problem with doing what needs to be done. I had no problem with isolating ourselves. I'm I'm all for everything that we need to do to allow ourselves to get over this thing. However, when when we begin to allow our actions to affect our inner man and begin to... When we allow 
what we are hearing to affect our actions and then to affect whether what we have believed or not all our life is sturdy enough for us to stand on. That's when what hair I've got left on my neck started standing up. And I started thinking to myself, where do we, where do we, where do we stand up? Where do we, where do we draw a line? Where do we say you, we've got to be the church and we've got to be the people of God and we can't at the same time and then, then you begin to, help me, Lord. Then we had to begin to ask questions like, do you allow people who may have a virus to come in and be prayed for? That's the questions we asked. Do we shy away from reading scripture of faith in case one who gets sick, do we, do we stand up and proclaim that, Scriptures of faith over, over sickness. and do I, do I stand up and proclaim scriptures over pestilence and diseases with the, with the, with the, in my mind somebody could get sick and, 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 and we don't want to look like a fool when, when those questions are being brought up and when we are trying to figure out do we pray for the sick or do we allow ourselves to try to uplift people when they could get sick and when we do this and when we do that, some stopped me in my tracks and said, wait a minute. James 5 slapped me in the face and said, are there any sick among you? If there are, you should pray for them. I'm wondering if there's any spirit left inside of us to where we can say, you know what? I still believe that God is on the throne and I still believe that he is able, and I still believe that he can heal COVID, and I believe that he can heal cancer, and I believe that he can touch the sick, and I believe that the presence of God, when it hits this place, that no sickness can stand any longer. I wonder if there's anybody in here that believes that God is still able. Come on, somebody give God a praise if you believe that he's able. I'm not trying to fluff you up. Do you believe it or not? I believe it this morning. I believe that those who live in the shelter of the Most High God will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty, Psalm 91 and 1. I believe that this is declared about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I will trust in him, for he will rescue you from every trap you protest and from every deadly disease. Go ahead and say it one time. I said he will, that he will protect you from every deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promise are your armor. And, oh, don't you preach that. Don't you preach that. You're going to look like a fool if you preach that. Let me tell you something. I'm going to look like a fool then because I am going to preach the word of God. Whether people like it or not, whether people want to receive it or not, I, can't, I, cannot, I cannot back down from the word. The question is, do we believe? Do we believe that he's able? You know, we, we go through the process of, of trying to make sure that you're medically cleared. Because, you know, Come on, somebody come help me play. Uh, don't help me play, just play for me. Um, I don't know how to do this. I laid it in Pastor Vic's lap this morning. I 
ain't going to turn away a sick person. Because by his stripes... I know people that if you've never been into this house of worship and, and I'm not trying to say it's anything about this this building because it's not it's about when believers come together where two or three are gathered but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when it gets real in this house that diseases have to bow I've seen fevers break in this house. I've seen healings take place in the presence of an almighty God. I guess what I'm trying to say is, people, is that I, I'm not a sellout. And I believe the word of God. And our faith has to produce actions that show that we believe what this word says. Go back. Uh, you don't have to, but I'm going back to John 4 and verse 35. You know the saying, four months between planting of harvest, but I say, wake up and look because the fields are already ripe for harvest. If there's anything that messed me up spiritually during this time is this. Is that we are so susceptible to losing focus of what we've been called to do because of what we're hearing could happen to us. Did you know regardless of what the government says did you know that regardless of a sickness did you know regardless if any other church around us is open which some of them are did you know regardless of what anybody else is doing did you know regardless of what they're saying or they're saying or the naysayer this say did you know regardless of any of that we're still called your calling didn't take a time out And no matter what come my way, my God is still faithful. Deuteronomy 31 and 6, it says, so be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will never fail you. He will never abandon you. I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but baby, that's all I got to take to the bank. If I don't have that, I don't have nothing. I can't, I can't get on this. No, I've got to stand on the word that will last forever. His word is still faithful. God is looking for people who would say in spite of everything going on around them. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying God's showing favoritism. 
I believe he's searching the earth to and fro, seeking for those hearts who are truly his soul. Do you believe, do you believe that God could put a covering of protection for people who are seeking him? If we look like the world, then we have failed as the church. We have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. We are not to be as the world, but we are to be separated. We should not act like. We should not talk like. We should not react as though the world react when things don't come our way. We have been set out from among the rest. Y'all don't hear me today. There's got to be some faith that'll make you stand up in a storm with a hand lifted, with tears in your eyes and say, come what may, if God be for me, who in the world does COVID-19 think it is that could come against me? If, if nobody's a testimony, baby Memphis is a testimony. If that baby can fight everything that comes his way and God can still do a work in him, let me tell you something, God is still able. And if you don't think I ain't gonna shout when he comes in this house, when they bring him in this house, and social distance will be X'd out that day. this I ain't going to try to be naive and I'm not going to try to preach just zippity doo dah I might be sick with a virus next week I don't know I hope I'm not but if I am can I tell you something I will still preach and I will still have faith and if I look like a fool, I'm going to go down looking like a fool for Jesus. Because if he's brought me this far. Listen, I'm not going to try to bend your arm and tell you, you know, altar services and stuff like that. We, we've been trying our best to rack our brain how to handle this kind of stuff. Listen. We sang it. We better believe it. Freedom is here. If you need to get in an altar, they're always open. I don't want you to feel fearful. I don't want you to be intimidated by things that would try to come against us. Because I've got, I got news for you. We still got work to do. I said, we still got work to do. We had to do what we had to do. And looking back on it, we did what we had to do. But we was in the middle of, of working on that church. And man, we was, about to, we was about to catch a stride. We had a bunch of people coming in. And we had to call everything off just a couple days before. We still got work to do. Walls were being put up yesterday, praise the Lord. We're not done yet. God is not done with this church. God is not done with you. God is not done with you. And I believe that we are about to see some of the greatest days that we have ever seen before in our life. 
if you if you would just go with me for a second i believe that we are about to see something on a spiritual level like we've never seen before i believe that we're about to see spiritual breakthrough i believe that we're about to see the spirit manifest himself in our lives in our churches in our homes i believe healings are going to take place i believe there's going to be people who come in here with sicknesses and ailments in their body and before anybody can even pray for them the power and the holy spirit begins to work and you're going to see people break out of stuff and i'm not just talking about physical i'm talking about mental there's going to be people come in here that's going to be depressed and it's going to leave with joy there's going to be people that come in here and it's going to be broken in their heart and in their spirit and they're going to leave full of faith and full of love you want to know why because god is still on the throne and he's still able and he still wants to touch and he still wants to do a work if you believe that this morning i want you to stand all over the house I want believers right now, believers who have faith, who are not, listen, who are not afraid to stand on what you believe. I want you to lift up your hands. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other things are sinking sand. Hear me in this house. If you are sick in your body, I don't want you to dare have any hesitation to come in and have somebody pray for you. We've already made preparations for that too. We will pray for you. We will uplift you. I believe that the only way that people can, if, if he, I'm supposed to call on anybody sick in the church to be healed, as James says, then that means somebody's got to be sick. I'm not going to I'm not going to allow fear to keep us from seeing breakthrough. God, we worship you. We praise you, Lord. Come on, lift up your hands all over this house. Listen. We've got to praise him. Our worship and our praise is going to be the key that cranks this engine. seizure right now he's been having them all week pray for Jaden right now is there any believers in the house come on altars are open, come and just lay in this altar and just cry out to God, you need it. Jesus, Jesus. We're not going to get in a hurry. Freedom is here. Freedom. 
sound coming up in June, May, next week. On her left kidney. And we needed to be clear. Is there a believer in the house? Is there any faith in the house right now that believe that God is still able? need y'all to patty cake it out. I need some warriors to go to fight with me right now. Stretch your hands this way. Yeah, sickness can't say. Yeah.
to the person beside you. I'm not going to ask you to do stuff like that for right now. But I'm going to ask you to lift up your hands as we go into Lord and dismissal. I pray for I pray for breakthrough, okay? I'm believing in breakthrough. God, in the name of Jesus, we speak breakthrough. We speak breakthrough in people's lives. We speak breakthrough in minds. We speak breakthrough in sicknesses and illnesses, God. Lord, this is not the time to retreat, God. This is the time to stand upon the word and declare that you are still a healer, to declare that you are still able. God, if there's a word, this has been declared by our governor as a day of prayer. Lord, we will not back down. We will stand on what prayer is all about upon this rock. Lord, we will stand here and declare that you are God who is able to touch this state. You are able to touch this community. Lord, you're able to touch our home, our families. Lord, we declare healing. We declare breakthrough. God, we believe in you, Jesus. name above all names in Jesus Christ and we seal it by saying amen come on one more time give the Lord a hand clap of praise you're not my problem anymore social distance on on your own now I just dismiss I love you we, hey we start back everything up this week come be with us Wednesday night we love you God bless you amen